Well, I mean, where do you see sort of skiing going now then? You know, because obviously there's there's been this sort of, um, re- I can recognise this shift in skiing in the last 10 years, particularly with certain styles of skiing. So, I mean, I know, for example, when I'm taking um, Gary with me, I was telling you Gary Tumbas to Argentina with me, um, and he trains with us in the winter as a trainer and he's, he's coming in summer. And that sort of style of skiing that I see Gary sort of use a lot is a type of skiing which normally the Austrians don't use, for example. It's, it's quite against and To such a point, it sort of alienated Gary a bit from some of the associations who want to ski more the Austrian way um, as opposed to that style. But, you know, how do you see the development of skiing do you see it going more down that route? Because, you know, NZ, Australia, Asia, they definitely ski a little bit different. I, uh, this is how I would, how I would answer that. The, the first thing would be, um, you know, like people like Gary and Riley and, and Paul Lorenz and, and Richie Berger and all them, like it would be boring if they tried to ski. It's not hard for them to ski that other way. Right, so you, you you know they're looking to really push the limits. That requires more precision, strength, you know, mobility, all those things, a lot of training. And I think it looks, you know, it's quite interesting to to look at. You know, sex sells. You put that on Instagram. You're the only one doing turns like that. You know, people want to looks cool, right? That's yeah. and so I think that's that's fair enough. Um, so so that's that aside. Where I think. Uh, skiing is going and where I think it'd be great to go is get people like, like make peace skiing more cool again, because like speaking with a couple of really happy clients this, this winter, they said, you know what? Like I spoke to someone that did a report on like the state of skiing Utah after the 21, 22 season. And the guy was like, man, what a bad season. So little snow, we hardly got any powder days. And my client was like, man, I've had the best season. I've learned to love carving. And in spring, I learned to love bump skiing. Yeah. And if I was just doing what most of the people around Utah are and whatever, oh, like fresh snow and that sort of skiing is what they aim for, you're missing out. And like yeah. a guy sent me a video today in Mammoth, no one on the hill, there's great spring slush, like such fun, good skiing. Yeah. If you could just, like so many people could be enjoying more skiing if they – found the joy in in techno skiing and this and this guy is a big wave surfer yeah like he loved the peace skiing you know like there's nothing wrong with with, with that so so that's where i think it's going more and carve those sorts of things and youtube videos are helping people see that that can be fun i I think that um that's interesting you said that because when i learned to ski as you know later in life and and I finished um, doing my level three, I think, when I was down in New Zealand. And we'd returned down to New Zealand after a season, very, very dry season in Austria, very icy, very, um, you know, limited snow. And all the people that I'd, I'd been working through the industry with had been to Canada and they came back. Their skiing was crap compared with mine because I had been <laughs> skiing on a hard packed icy piece to all season and they'd had this fantastic beautiful you know forgiving conditions if you like and skiing mm-hmm. on wider skis etc which brings me on to the last question i wanted to ask was i noted that um you had shifted a little bit onto a longer ski at times which is a lot of the criticism that you know i've presented to people seven eight years ago in fact when i met briefly riley and paul here with gf um it was interesting because, and nothing against them, I, I love the guys and whatever, but I think they recognised their weakness as well. They fell apart when you put them onto a bigger ski. They were literally using a slalom ski so much for this type of dynamic turn that when they skied on a longer ski, they couldn't replicate the same dynamics. So I noted that you would put on a longer ski. Um, here in Austria, you're laughed at if you're skiing on slalom skis. You, you tread, tread like some sort of like <laughs> alien or something. You know, you have to be on a, a giant slalom ski all the time, which to a degree on icy pistes and with stability, it's actually great because you have this huge length. It doesn't have shape, so it doesn't grab when you're doing plow parallels, plow mm-hmm. turns. You know, it really helps. That it doesn't have that parabolic extreme. Um, but 
what was your reason for coming off? And I'm guessing, you know, I might be wrong, that you had probably been predominantly in your industry working through it on a, on a, sl- a slalom ski. Or oh, is that not true? No, totally true. Totally true. And, and first of all, I'd say I don't think their skiing fell apart on a long ski. And you look at all the, all those people, you know, and I mean, I know I've skied mostly more with Paul and Riley. They can ski like a 30-meter ski very, very well. Now they it can, was just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And back then, like we, when you're working full-time ski instructor in Australia, very busy slopes, you're, you're teaching people how to carve again because you're not teaching much off-piste because skiing is rubbish off-piste a lot of the time or very difficult. So slalom ski is better to show at slower speeds how when you tip it over it turns. So so, you, so you're on that for a reason for teaching. And so then that also brings out when you go and push it, you're doing more of this dynamic slalom type turn where you there's not a lot of twisting because you do that, the turns over in like, split second so you're loopier uh it changes what what you're gonna what you're gonna do but the reason i went to a sorry you were gonna yeah, say I, I was just gonna ask why then did you switch to the longer ski and what did you find how did that help you? yeah well now i i have the luxury i'm not i i teach skiing online i don't really teach people in person at all and so and then going to canada i had wide open slopes i think a, a mid-length mid radius ski is more versatile and fun. I could feel that uh, it was just things were happening too fast, too, yeah. too quickly for a long turn with a slalom ski. And I really enjoyed, I wanted to go faster. I wanted to have more time and that kind of ski, like 16 and a half meter radius was really fun on like Canadian slopes. And even in Australia, like you can, you don't take up the whole run. You can take up like half of it and still make a full, nice, stable, long-term ski bumps. And then I also wanted to work on my short turn, not being as much, like I wanted to be forced to steer it, you know, Austrian the, the, style. Yeah, and- the blending of steering and carving, which I say when we're teaching our level threes, going that level, they always find a problem with this because one of the tests is you have to be able to, you know, go down a steep slope, black, not carving, but skid carving. And they can either carve, or they can skid, but blending the two elements becomes a little bit of a brain <laughs> issue for people. Yeah, um, so it is and good. it's so fun to be able to. Like I loved working on that. Actually, like I felt I made some really good short turns and figured out this blending of like making quite a snappy short turn on a, on a, a like ski. a one yeah on a longer ski. And I love doing it on like my twenty three meter like a 183 GS ski, that one there actually behind me, like that one, I actually feel sometimes, like you said, I I make a better sort of short turn because yeah, yeah, you sort of line things up through the steering. Anyway, it's just different. And I think one thing I would point, I always point out to the Austrians when they, I was testing the Marcel Hirscher's new ski slalom one and they were laughing again, slalom ski on your feet. And I said, the issue is, is a slalom ski, is far more tiring than it is skiing on a long yeah, ski. Your back, totally. you're going to feel your back if you're skiing on a slalom yep. ski. Whereas in yep. a long ski, there's so much more ease and comfort on a longer ski. You are, you know, the force is, um, you know, not the same uh, as it is in a slalom ski. And, you know, yep. so I always get them back and say, that you're just saying that because you can't, you can't actually do it. And actually, if you put them yeah, on a slalom yeah. ski, what's weird is they get rebounded. They get, they fly up in the air because it's such, it's not forgiving a slalom ski. There's no, you know, the, the, yeah. the sweet spot's tiny. Uh, whereas on yeah. a long ski, you can be a little bit of out of shape and actually it doesn't rebound in the same way. So, and I would just say like, like who gives up, you yeah, know, like yeah. beep, like, you know, that's just saying like Dave writing, oh, look at you skiing, yeah. slalom skiing. And oh, look how much better, like, you know. Yeah. Harness Reichert is because he skis like Super downhill cheap, yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah, oh, you're more of a man. Like, it's like, uh, I just uh, think that's, that's it, ridiculous. But that is exactly what you it know? is. What it is. Yeah, I just, I just think that's so... No, don't get, get me wrong. I'm not saying and... people should be on blades or something because, they're, you know, we use yeah. blades to teach carving sometimes because you have to be centred to be on a blade. Otherwise, you would just fall back over. So there's a, it's a product, there's a reason.
reason. But again, one of the things we're quite strict with with our course participants is we ask them, you know, when they're purchasing a kit, we don't like them on wide skis, for example. You know, basically we explain mm. about reasons why, talk on the knee, etc. especially on these type of slopes. Yeah. We're not in Canada here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we always limit it to say, look, if you're going to go wide, 85 is maximum we allow, but we prefer you, like on that vocal behind you, on something like that. Normally, an average man, this highest height, 180, 17 meters, race calf ski. Yeah perfect for them to progress into you know it's a little hard at exactly. first because you need a bit more patience than you did with your slalom skis but great for progression super ski and for, and for the shoe totally family, yeah yeah 100 agree with that like i learned that for, again the ego thing i've picked up surfing since i've we moved closer to the northern like we're in the northern beaches now and so i've really gone in you know hard doing a lot of a lot of time and what are all the pros on short like narrow boards that hardly yeah. float. Yeah. And so what do I want to go? What do I go out and buy that? The, like a couple of months ago, I was like, you know what? I need a bigger board. So when bought a mid length, much more foam, I'm starting to make progress much quicker. Yeah. <laughs> it's the equivalent of like, Oh, what are all these cool people in the movies on 110 underfoot faction? Yeah. Boom. Oh, that's what I should be on. And you can't learn those skills of edging, balance, and, you know, so you're absolutely right. Choose that that equipment. And all, all those people, a lot of them started out probably like in the race club yeah. or whatever, you know, on a narrow ski back in the day. They all went through that. And then that's why Marcus Kasten can rip on a 98 underfoot like blizzard yeah, ski yeah, 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 absolutely. and you know but, but he's strong and he also used to race for the u.s ski team so you but know. yeah we, we my way of looking at it, especially with my knees is you know i don't want to be on wide skis on a piece that's hard because you know you have that that movement arm yeah and it, i'm aware of it with talk you know there's a reason that an ice skate as blade is right in the center of yeah. the foot um, but taking the physics out of it, for me, as I progressed, because when I first did the course um, years and years back and learned to ski properly, I was on a slalom ski and I progressed to the 180 and it was horrible. It was like, oh, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible skier. I can't do anything. And it is. It's literally like, God. I, but actually, when you stick with it and you stay with it, you realize the benefits of that length of that ski. is It's optimal. Because, you know, if you're on a ski that's 160, like a slalom ski, a 165, and you're 180 tall, it's a bit of a ratio interesting balance there anyway, you know, when you're talking for after and all this. So the slightly longer ski, um, we tend to put, you know, our, you know, we had about 400 people go through this year on that length. And I know that shops, you know, when they're selling skis, they'll go, oh, what do you like to do? And generally, oh, these are easier to turn. These are quicker on the edge. You know, they're pointing you to a slalom ski. Um, I would just be wary of that, that actually you might want to challenge yourself at first the stability obviously in a longer ski it's there the lack of shape makes it drift just so much better i find with my slalom ski um that i was using they they grab you know the one they want to be on edge they, they want to go they want to yeah. be on edge and that that again makes you tired in your knees and your back so i would say if you you are um, a person like me getting issues with back, knees, hips, whatever, actually going to a ski that will drift a little easier would be helpful, I think. Yeah, and I think, again, it's just like all these stages you can go through because there's people that I would suggest, you know, like who've just never felt like a lot of early edge in the top of the turn. If you want to feel that, get on a slalom ski because yeah. you won't fall over as easy, right? So, yeah, but yeah. once you get that feeling, then like you jumped onto a bigger ski and you're right, I got to go faster. I got to be more patient. Yeah. I got to move differently. Yeah. But, but if at least you have that, like, oh, I know that I can get early edge, you know, then you have a reference point to then start, you know, to, Which to is what taking a. Uh, happens when you, when you see different. Um, our lot. I, I've, I've had our lot go from level two and then they're going to level three and we'll put them onto a longer ski. And, you know, I remember one lad complained once, went, oh, my skiing's gone. It's completely crap now. I'm, I'm always falling inside. It's like, 
Yes, of course you're falling inside because you're skiing it with the same timing as the slalom ski, but you need yeah. that little bit more speed and patience. You can't just fall yeah. inside on a longer ski. You know, and that's that's what it taught me. You can't just dive inside unless you, you know, one of these phenomenal racers. <laughs> you, you need yeah. a little bit of patience at first and you need to be aware that things aren't going to happen. It's in, it's in the evidence. It says 12 meter radius slalom ski, 18 meter radius. You know, let's face it, it's, it's going <laughs> to... You can't just dive inside if you want to be on the edge. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's educating people about that. And, you know, skiing, again, just showing that equipment has such a big bearing on what we do. You know, there's no doubt about it from the boot to the ski. It can, it can spot. And then you start talking about the poles, you know, and <laughs> it, it just keeps yeah. going. So it's it's really interesting yeah. part of it. Yes. Good stuff. Yeah. So, Tom, it was Good great stuff. to uh, catch up. Um, you know, no doubt about it. We've had a, a little bit of food for thought for people. We've had our rant. Um, if people would like to see more ranting from Tom, <laughs> he doesn't rant enough. He needs to. He needs to be more like Paul. Tom needs to be more like Paul. Yeah. He needs to be more angry. <laughs> no, I just leave that to you. All right. <laughs> um, controversial, Tom. That's what gets the YouTube watches. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think every type of person we need all different people like you know right. out there and it makes <laughs> makes the world a good place otherwise it'd be boring yeah, yeah. well i'm going to leave it there um it was great to, to speak to tom um if you want to catch up with tom i'll put his links all in here and um, you can find him on bigpictureskiing.com and um, he will be skiing with the um, ski instructor academy at some point i mean i know he's skiing with new zealand with our other company and um, so you can catch him down in new zealand as well um yep. if you want to catch up with me you'll have to find me <laughs> <laughs> and i'm running my first ever like big picture skiing tom camp in threadbow which is cool it's already full so don't worry about applying but i'm um, just just dipping the toes in the water um i'm sure you'll yeah, do some mostly, videos for us will you to show us what you did yeah yeah exactly but you know people be surprised the online stuff like it's we're getting pretty good results so uh people don't believe you know it's it's uh, i think in person is great but you can get a lot of continuity with the right long -term person pro with the right, with the right person yeah 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 you've got to be that kind of person who's like yep i'm, I'm doing this for the season yeah yeah great thanks stuff. so much paul All right.